Hey guys, welcome back. Free Tip Friday. We're going to be filming this video first person shooter style. I'm going to be going through uh, my dust collection setup to just give you tips on the stuff that I like about my dust collection and the stuff that I don't like. Stuff that you should avoid doing because I'm by no means an expert and I just kind of did some research online like the rest of us and I made my own dust collection system. And yeah, some stuff is awesome, some stuff not so much. So I'm just going to shoot from the hip and learn what you want. I know some of you are like, oh man, I'd rather see your face talking to the camera because you're so damn handsome. Um, if that's the case, you're just gonna have to wait until the end of the video. Don't worry, it's worth the wait. So, right here, this is probably um, one of my favorite things about this dust collection, and that's a chip separator. If you don't wanna know what that is, it's a chip separator. It separates the chips out of your dust collection system so that they don't get sucked into your dust collection, which is over in the closet there. So all the heavy chips that come from the planer fall to the bottom of the pail, and only the fine dust keeps going up into the dust collection system so that you're not cramming your bags and your dust collector full of planer chips. And you know that if you plane like 10 boards, you can fill your whole dust collector up in five minutes. It's ridiculous. So having this, that you can just lift this off, this just sits in here. I modified mine because they say this fits a standard garbage can, but the one I got, it does not. I couldn't find a garbage can that it fit over top of properly. But it fit perfectly inside one of these big brutes here. So I just took some rubber. I had some industrial rubber matting that I was using for different projects around the job. And I just took a piece of rubber and like screwed it to the inside of the, to the barrel, and then I caulked it. So that way when I drop this lid in here, it creates like a vacuum seal when the dust collection system's on and it's easy to just pop it off. So that works great for me. Um, you'll also notice that I've got a lot of this um, coil transparent hose stuff. That's a big no-no. I know a bunch of you are like, oh, come on, man. Everybody knows you don't use that stuff. Well, I fell for it, okay? I just looked at it. I thought, this is convenient see through the hose so if there's any plugs and stuff it's easy to fix but it just kills your efficiency because the inside of your hose is all ribbed and uh, yeah it's not good for airflow so you only want to use this slinky hose stuff when you absolutely have to like right at the tool going to the tool so other than connecting directly from your valve to your tool all the rest of this should be either PVC pipe or uh, ducting, metal ducting pipes. You can see I transitioned a six inch pipe right there. Um, I'm gonna take off, I'm gonna take the rest of this off and replace it with four inch metal ducting pipe and just tape up all the joints and the elbows. That should definitely help my airflow. You can see the same issue here. I've got it connected to the tool, but then above here, this should all be metal piping. And a lot of people say you want to keep it as big as possible. So I'm going to elbow six inch, come down six inch, and then transition to four right there to get a really good airflow. And then the other main kill spot is I thought it would be cool to have, well, I didn't think it would be cool. I thought it would, well, everything I do is cool. But what I'm trying to say is I thought it would be convenient to have this all a slinky pipe because, you know, when you're, when you're pulling out the, the bags and you want to get at your dust collector and you got to move it around, um, I can just undo that right there and then this can just push right out of the way. Which is convenient, but this six inch slinky hose right off the bat is just killing my airflow. So I'm going to replace this. Um, I want it to maintain flexibility. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep a small section of this and then I'm going to put a section of metal duct pipe in here and then at, up at the ceiling here I'll leave another small section just so that it's flexible from side to side but that way this whole piece will be metal and I'll get better airflow out of that and then I might even put a bit of metal pipe here and just leave this this part here as a slink slink a dank for those of you who haven't seen my uh, dust collection setup video I set up this low voltage uh, dust chute switch so when I open this 
See how these tiny little switches are activated when I open and close that? That's just awesome. Saves you so much time. A lot of people use remotes and stuff, but you always lose the remote and it's pain in the butt and you don't want to run around switching your dust collection on and off. So I highly recommend using that Long Ranger system. You can just look up the Long Ranger. Be careful to type it correctly because you might run into some questionable websites. What woodworking video isn't complete without a penis joke, you know? I will say that with this metal ducting, um, PVC is probably your best bet. I don't know how expensive it is in comparison to the metal. I just went for the metal ducting because I couldn't find like six inch PVC without getting to that huge schedule 40 type stuff. I didn't want that big heavy pipe. So I went with the metal ducting. Now the negative thing about this is there's different gauges of metal ducting. You want to get heavy gauge. I don't know exactly what the gauge is, but talk to the ducting guy. I found um, depending on where you get it, if you get the thin gauge stuff you're, and your dust collector is really powerful, like 220 volt dust collector, like double bagger, like this sucker, this thing will collapse your pipes. I set my whole dust collection system up and then these two sections of pipe right here, as soon as I fired it up, um, it, it worked fine, but then when I closed the, the vent, um, the suction just became super intense, right? Because it can't, the vent's closed, but the machine's turned off, but it's still, still winding down and creating a ton of suction, and so it just collapsed those pipes on me. I had to replace those two pipes. Um, with a heavier duty metal. So make sure you get like a heavy gauge six inch pipe, and probably four inch as well. Just don't get like the cheap Home Depot, like thin stuff. You gotta actually like figure out what the heavy gauge stuff is and get the heavier gauge stuff. Okay, okay. Here's a close up look at the little uh, transformer for the Long Ranger. So you just run some power to that thing plug your dust collector into that transformer and then all your low voltage wires come down. They just screw onto the top there and the system is set up. It's just as simple as it gets to set up. So if you're setting up your dust collection system, I recommend using these plastic dust gates. Um, why? Because they're cheap um, and the metal ones have like a little three quarter inch flange on here and getting like pipes on there and screw into that, it's a pain in the ass. My brother-in-law set up his shop with the metal ones thinking they would be beefier or better or whatever, not the case. These ones are super nice. They fit right inside all your four inch um, galvanized ducting pipes. So you can just fit that in, nice tight fit, put your foil tape. I recommend using foil tape, not duct tape. It's just easier to use, it lasts forever, seals like beautifully. And then you just put your self-tapping screws and you have a nice inch and a half flange to screw to so you get a really good solid connection with your duct. And I found that uh, just using some really short screws you can still um, screw and tap your little uh, switches into this plastic piece. So I haven't had any issues with putting my little limits or my little dust collection long ranger switches on the plastic. It works just fine. A little bit of finagling with the screws, but you can figure it out. If you have any questions or comments about my dust collection system, uh, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section as well as other guys can chime in and give their advice as well. We can just let it be a good information exchange system going on because I know there's a lot of stuff out there with dust collection. Um, but ultimately, if you just join a bunch of pipes, connect them to your tools, it'll suck some dust. But getting it to work just right takes a little bit of fine tuning and it's kind of different for every shop and every setup. So you just got to get to it and figure it out. So yeah, my recommendations would be use plastic gates and uh, elbows and all that sort of stuff instead of the metal. Um, go with it. Go with the galvanized ducting because you can just find that stuff anywhere and it's pretty cheap. And it fits well with all the plastic gates really easily. Just some self-tapping screws and some foil tape, done. 
and use that Long Ranger system, which is an awesome system. It's pretty cheap. I think it costs like 150 bucks Canadian with all the stuff. But I ordered an extra spool of wire, which I didn't really need because you can just connect all the pieces. You just solder them together into like one wire. You don't have to like run an individual wire for like each gate. You can just kind of splice them all together and just wherever. So it's a super easy system to set up. So yeah, do that and use as little of the slinky hose as possible. Just connect to your tools with the slinky hose. Okay? Okay. Those are my tips. I hope you found them useful. If you have anything to add, leave it in the comment section below. We'll catch you next time, guys. Samurai out.